He wasn't hiding it. I think, I think he knew what he was doing. Yeah, it was a pretty good video for me. It was interesting. I love it. Well, it's not my practice. All right. Doc, how, how big was Jordan Farmer feeding him? He was great. You know, I've been on him, uh, probably riding him harder than anybody right now because I think that's he has that in. Um, and forget the offense. I just thought that Jordan Farmer got into the ball, picked the ball up full court, turned the ball, and I thought that turned his energy on. And so that's what I've been on him about. Um, you know, I, I tell him, you got to play 20 minutes. What, 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 no reason to save it. And if you do like that, you play more. Uh, and I thought he was great. Like, I thought his, his defense changed the game, single-handedly his defense, and then the entire second unit with Baby and CDR and all those other guys. But I thought that Farmar, and, I, you know, I believe the point guard sets the tone. And when your second unit point guard can come in and do that, uh, defensively, then things are, good things will happen. I thought that was the difference in the game. What about Baby's energy? It was great, but I, I, I thought they all fed off of Jordan. You know, Baby was great, you know, and, uh, you know, we just told Baby, play as hard as you can when you get tired, give us a signal, you know, and he did it twice, which was great. I, I love when a player plays hard enough to come out. You know, that's always a good sign. It's tough when Crawford has an overnight with Hawes out too. Did you kind of need someone else from the bench to? to yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I just we needed them to have energy defensively, and I, I just believe when you do that, the offense will come. You know, it's funny. Uh, this unit, they come in the games thinking about offense, and then they don't play defense, and then they don't play offense. If you know what I mean. Uh, when they come in with that, they get stops, they get fast breaks, they get easy buckets, they get to the foul line, and all of a sudden. The team that wanted to score is scoring because of their defense, and and they actually get what they want, but they have to get you know you have to put in the deposit first, you know before you get paid, and I, I think uh, they did that. Do you think moving up the scoring list, uh, Clippers he moves into to fifth uh, this year, just twenty five. Blake. <laughs> oh, did he? Wow. Jeez, how old is he? Twenty five. That says a lot. Do you, you think know, that means something? There's a lot of jokes to that too. Uh, it, it says that Blake is a great player, number one. It's amazing he's on the fifth at 25, and he missed one year. You know, when you think about that, that's, that's remarkable. It just says how great he is. Uh, and then it says other stuff, too. Such as? I'm not saying. It said that, it, know what it says? That I played here. <laughs> Doc, Chris was traded here three years ago, I guess, mm -hmm. on the state. Do you remember where you were during that whole kind of process where he was almost traded to the Lakers, then it happened to the Clippers, and put that whole play? Yeah, I was with the Celtics. But do you remember your thoughts on... <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, because, you know, we still had an outside chance of thinking we could win it. And, you know, we probably didn't realistically, but we thought that, and we were looking at that trade. We were like, wait, what? Kobe, Chris Paul, Gasol? Um, maybe even Biden was still there. I don't yeah. even know that, but uh, and yeah, that I do remember that. And how him coming here kind of was. I mean, Blake was here, but I guess him coming here, Blake stayed. Yeah, it it it, it, it created a lot of things, you know. Um, you know, and, and look at the other in New Orleans. Whether they're happy with what happened or not, I don't even know. I would probably say no. I'm not sure, but you know. Um, it, it affected three teams, not just two teams. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, listen, Blake was already here, and he needed someone else. And then when Chris came, that solidified uh, the Clippers have a chance. Doc, when the team performed as well as they did tonight, is it hard to find a teaching moment? Always teaching moments. You know, all you have to do is watch the tape. You can find a teaching moment pretty quickly. Uh, first quarter, we didn't play great. You know, uh, second you know, we scored, but they scored a ton of points. So there's your teaching moments. Offensive rebounds uh, and 50-50 balls in the first quarter, they got all of them. After that, I thought our energy uh, matched and even, even went past theirs, and I thought that was a change in the game. How much does it help to have a game like this after the last couple, though, just to really get the confidence? Yeah, it's nice. I don't think our confidence went anywhere. Um, you know, I, you know I, I say this all the time. I've said it for really for nine years. The, I think the season is a three-part season. The first 20 games, everybody's excited. Those are easy games to get up for. The last 20 uh, games, anybody who's going to the playoffs is excited because they can see the end and they're ready for the playoffs. The middle 40 are the hard ones. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's where your team gets better. 
It's where you get mentally tougher. Uh, it's where you learn about yourself on tired nights and how you figure wins out. Because at this stretch, and you'll see it, I mean, teams are losing all over the place. Teams, they're losing the, you know, we great records are losing the lesser record. These are the tough ones. And it's hard. Uh, from the next, you know, 35 games are hard games, no matter who you're playing. And uh, these are the games you just got to figure it out, try to win them. You're going to lose some of them. You know, you just got to grind through them. And this is the stretch. What happened to Redick after that hot start? Is it something they were doing defensively on him? They were paying more attention to him? Yeah, but he didn't get it as much, number one, uh, because they, they start, you know, paying more attention to him, I'm sure. Uh, so give, give them credit. They made pretty good adjustments. 35 assists on 43. Yeah, that's nice. Is that kind of the story? Of yeah, and like we said three games ago, when J.J. gets off and scores, that means the ball is moving. When he doesn't, that means the ball not, is not moving. Uh, you know, and it's nice in a game where Jamal is over or whatever and uh, C.P. not until the second half, he, had, he was over at halftime, that you have a lead. That tells you that the ball is really moving. Travis had more points tonight than he had all season. Does he look right to you now, more so? He's getting there. You know, it just takes some time. He's missed so many games. So I'm, I'm not expecting the world. I just want him to one step at a time, keep working at it, uh, keep learning our stuff. You know, he's, he's doing a good job. Any uh, previous thoughts on the next matchup with Indiana destroying the Lakers tonight? <laughs> yeah, I saw that at halftime. You know, it's funny. I, I try to watch games to scout, you know, you know the next game because you get there early and I, and I turn that game on. And then, you know, when it's like that, you don't you don't get a lot out of it. So um, they played us tough in Indiana, so we have to be ready for that. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bears win. Lost. <laughs> I knew that.